this area, Shoal Creek Boulevard, that you're turning onto now uh, is a similar project that was completed in 2020 where, you know, it, it's a, a bike lane that is added to an existing roadway. And that roadway has existed previously to serve only cars and that's what people are used to but if you have a, a bike lane that's this added in you know the thought is over time folks will understand the required slowing of speeds on that road and see the benefit of having more access and more uh, safety for cyclists and especially on that shoal creek boulevard stretch we've just seen tons of use it, it's exploded with users from you know very experienced cyclists to kids whose parents now feel comfortable letting them ride down the road to a park or to a friend's house unassisted so it has just been a huge change in um, perception and accessibility that we're happy with yeah yeah Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman, and that is Ivy Kaiser, Executive Director of the Shoal Creek Conservancy. And uh, Ivy and I have a nice little conversation about how special the Shoal Creek corridor is. It's a watershed, it's a creek, an actual creek, um, but it's also a transportation corridor and a recreation corridor. And uh, it's because of, it, of its complexity uh, and as a nonprofit, the conservancy is, you know, as she likes to say, she's not a landowner, they're not landowners. They are uh, representing the community and the constituency of, uh, of users, of people who love that corridor uh, on behalf of the people who the entity that actually owns it, which is the city in most cases, and the different departments involved, including watershed, uh, parks and recreation, as well as public works and transportation sometimes too. So uh, it's, it's a wonderful conversation and I can't wait for you to uh, dive in and take a listen to this. Uh, this is episode number 148. So <laughs> this episode and then two more and we're done with season three. Uh, so, uh, so excited to have you here with me and uh, looking forward to having you uh, for the live streaming of episode number 150 with Doug Gordon with The War on Cars. So let's get right to it with Ivy. Ivy, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. It's such a pleasure to have you back. Thank you for having me. And I say back because this is round two. <laughs> we tried to do this last week and uh, it, uh, well, yeah, technology. You got to love it sometimes. You got to, you hate it. You love it. Second time's a charm. Exactly. We're going to live with it. <laughs> so um, what I'll have you do is just, you know, take a second to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well, thank you for having me. And I just wanted to say that John and I go way back because I previously, before Shoal Creek Conservancy, worked with REI and before that worked uh, with Keep Austin Beautiful. And uh, John and I worked at REI together. But I've been kind of in this realm of environmental activism and outdoor recreation, uh, promoting jobs in Austin for the last 10 years and have just been enjoying seeing all the different angles of various organizations that help to make our city so wonderful for outdoor recreation. And this is kind of how I ended up with Shoal Creek Conservancy. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny, too, because I, I would uh, uh, help out over at REI during the holiday season. So I wasn't like a, a, a full time person there. Uh, you know, it was basically when I wasn't traveling for active towns, I would, you know, pop in and, and uh, help out during the holiday season. So that was that was good fun to be able to do that and met some amazing people. So <laughs> it's, it's great. Great networking. You know, so yeah. many people come to REI for their, you know, seasonal work or just yeah. uh, guiding work to lead trips and do really fun things to get out in the world and, yeah, yeah. and travel and meet new people. Yeah, that's good stuff. Now at REI, um, you weren't really involved uh, so much with a store. You were involved with more of the exper experiential stuff, right? Right. So we, in the, what we called at the time, the outdoor school led classes, teaching folks basic skills like hiking 101 and camping 101 and uh, how to ride a bike and how to climb and mountain bike and um, kayak. So that was a, a wide variety of different kinds of activities that I was 
engaged in, but I also helped to run our programs that give back to the community. So I was in charge of um, communicating with all of the local nonprofits who do things like build new trail or maintain trails throughout the Austin region. And that was really the, the connection with Shoal Creek Conservancy as the Shoal Creek Trail Plan was being made, which I'm happy to share more about in a bit here. But um, the goal there was really to fund and support any organizations that build out bike networks. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it would be funny, too, because you and I would uh, run into each other at various, you know, events, you know, and and uh, and so that was that was always quite fun. And, and I'd be like, oh, hey, there's Ivy. <laughs> so uh, so I've pulled up your website here. And uh, so we can take a take a quick look at this and it'll be a nice little entree into the organization. And you had mentioned, you know, some of the plans and, and other things that are going on. Uh, what's the background of the organization itself? Sure. So Shoal Creek Conservancy started in 2013, really as a grassroots effort to find folks who wanted to care more for the Shoal Creek Trail and Shoal Creek itself uh, beyond what had traditionally been its maintenance and improvement schedule. So the organization really was born of a variety of neighbors and local business owners uh, with partnership of the city of Austin to make sure there's really a, a, a groundswell of support that could sustain a new nonprofit organization dedicated just to Shoal Creek and the Shoal Creek Trail. Um, one of the reasons that the Shoal Creek Trail is so important and beloved by so many people in Austin is that it has been around for many decades uh, with a major resurgence in the 60s. And it was really Austin's first hike and bike trail. So the legacy of this trail and the, the memories and relationship with many Austinites with this trail goes long back and is deep and highly beloved. And I think people just really wanted to see additional eyes and uh, efforts going into the improvements and the accessibility of this trail and uh, health of the, the Shoal Creek water. And so we are really here today to implement the ideas that the community had come together almost a decade ago to prioritize. And we do that through three main branches of our organization. So just to, to quickly lay out the three focus areas for Shoal Creek Conservancy, we have our Shoal Creek Trail Plan, which lays out the trail improvements, the Shoal Creek Watershed Action Plan, which lays out the ways to improve water quality and the health of the ecosystem around the creek and our community engagement side of things, which is really the fun events, the educational events on the trail that allow people to connect with Shoal Creek, learn about its history, learn about its geology and other natural features of the watershed, and just have excuses to come out for fun events that connect them to this outdoor space and really allow them to feel more ownership over it. Yeah. And I pulled up your, uh, you know, get involved uh, page here on your website. And one of the things that it really jumps out at me, and I do follow uh, the, the Shoal Creek Conservancy on uh, the social media feeds, is all of the vibrant uh, volunteer work and the activities and the, tr and the cleanups that go on um, on an ongoing basis. Talk a little bit about that part of it, how essential that volunteer work is for the organization. It really is. We have two volunteer work days a month. They're open to the public. And those are sometimes supplemented by other corporate work days, work days that we do with special groups on riparian restoration. But they're really the ones that those are the events where we're able to get the community involved in hands on cleaning of the creek, whether it's removing litter or um, removing invasive species from the banks to planting native trees, planting native grasses to really enhance the health of the watershed. Um, and also we do some beautification efforts up and down the creek as well. So they, those volunteer work days are just such a joy because we're able to have tangible, visible impacts on how healthy the creek is while getting to know the community and getting to know why people care so much about the creek to come out and dedicate a Saturday morning, say, uh, to being outside. And especially in the summer, you know that those folks are dedicated when oh, they yeah. come out on a 100 degree day. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I'm going to pull up the uh, your your actually your Twitter page here. And when and the, like I said, you know, the, these are just some photos from some of the recent uh, cleanups. This was just from a, a few days ago, and you can see, you know, all the goodies that people are finding uh, out and about. And yeah. A, a Fender guitar, <laughs> so uh, it, it's crazy the 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 things that you see and uh, and all of that and and this is so important. Um, we certainly notice this because uh, one of the crazy things about Austin is we can go through periods with uh, no rain <laughs> like we are right now, and uh, but then the skies will open up and you know you'll you'll just get a massive amount of water coming through there. And you, you, you really start to understand just how much debris and how much litter uh, ends up in the waterways. And that's devastating to the wildlife. And so it's uh, so wonderful to, to be able to have those volunteers to help with that watershed. And that's another thing. I, I'm just really glad you put it that way, because a lot of times when we try to explain the scope of Shoal Creek Conservancy's work, one of the first steps is explaining the concept of what the Shoal Creek watershed is and how vast it is. So Shoal Creek itself is an 11 mile creek that runs along the east, or sorry, the west side of Austin. And the watershed is 13 square miles that encompass it. And anything, any house, any business, any roadway that's in that watershed, if there's litter, if there are contaminants, oil, anything on the roads, once it rains, it all runs downstream to the lowest point, and that is Shoal Creek within the Shoal Creek watershed. So uh, all of those materials are what we end up finding with our volunteer work days in the creek and uh, removing it to the best of our ability. And then the things that aren't so visible and tangible, like the oil spills or, uh, you know, other chemicals that run off of properties, maybe fertilizers, for example, um, those are things that we really have to tackle through riparian restoration work and creating healthy uh, zones of vegetation along the banks of the creek. So that's another big piece of what we focus on with our volunteer work days is helping to remove and remediate those um, less visible types of pollutants. Yeah, because uh, some of it also is hiding in plain sight. So what's going on here, I think, is your invasive species and, and uh, you know, trying to get uh, some other healthy things going in. And so this is from another volunteer day. And this is the, you know, talking about the riparian buffer zone. And uh, yeah, going, going through and removing some of the invasive species and doing what they can to disperse some of those native seed balls. And so that's what that last photo was right here. That's a native plant seed ball. So <laughs> there you go. Hi, it is. it doesn't look like much, but it's right. very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Good, <laughs> good stuff. Uh, and, uh, other, other fun events, you know, things that you guys, um, you know, are doing. So we've got one coming up here real soon in September mm -hmm. is the Shoal Creek Social. What is this all about? This is our annual large scale fundraiser and event that spans a period of two weeks. So between September 1st and 15th, we do a variety of outreach uh, efforts online through mailers with our newsletter to try to raise funds for our year round programs, but also host events along the trail where we can be out in public and meet people who are just using Shoal Creek Trail, uh, meet families who want to come out and visit various parks along Shoal Creek. We host activities, including um, snacks and refreshments. We have some kind of map with a, a very, various different kinds of scavenger hunts or tours laid out on them each year. Uh, and then we invite our sponsor partners to come and lead activities too. So there's always some kind of fun games and activities that are family friendly. And it's just a fun time to be able to meet the wide variety of people who use the Shoal Creek Trail. And typically, if we're working with our closer partners and the people that we know live along the creek or use the creek for business or recreation, that's wonderful. And we, we love working with them. But these, this is one of the opportunities we have to really meet the folks that you don't see every day. Right, right. And yeah, good stuff. Now, we invite I mean, everybody to come join us. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So uh, I passed through it very, very quickly, but the big loop uh, is is a, a, an exciting aspect of the Shoal Creek Trail and the Shoal Creek uh, Watershed. 
Uh, walk us through, what are we looking at here on the big loop? So the big loop is a big vision that the Shoal Creek Conservancy and many of our partners have, which is to eventually have 30 miles of connected, safe, protected hike and bike trails around the city of Austin. So the lines that are here on this map in both the dark blue and green make up the entire 30 mile loop around the city north of the Colorado River. The dark blue line on the left is the Shoal Creek Trail. So that goes from uh, the intersection with the Butler Hike and Bike Trail at Lady Bird Lake all the way up to its current terminus at Highway 183. So that is about 10 miles of trail that currently exists on the ground. And then there's a dotted blue line going up to the northern Walnut Creek Trail on the top part of this map that is the remaining three miles that is yet to be built out for the connection between Shoal Creek Trail and northern Walnut Creek Trail. So that is one gap that is remaining in the big loop. That's one area that is a big focus for Shoal Creek Conservancy. But we don't really want to stop there. We want to continue to advocate for the rest of the big loop trail build out, including the stretch in the northeast corner of Austin between the Northern Walnut Creek Trail and the Southern Walnut Creek Trail. And then that area down at the bottom of the map, which is known as the Mocan Trail that connects the Lance Armstrong Bikeway to the Southern Walnut Creek Trail. Nice, nice, good stuff. And uh, there, we have another map here, which is gonna really focus in on uh, the actual um, Shoal Creek area. So uh, starting at the top uh, at number one, walk us through these different uh, key segments and, and what some of the focus areas are uh, in this, uh, this particular map. Right, so this map is a subset of projects that are included in the larger Shoal Creek Trail Plan that was published in 2018. So since that plan has many, many projects in it, we have to pull out a small subset each, uh, you know, every, every few years to focus on so that we don't get overwhelmed. Uh, the first five years of projects can be found on our website, and those have all made some notice, notable progress or have been completed. And then this is our second set of priority projects that we have started working towards uh, from the trail plan. The first one at the top being the Northern Walnut Creek Trail connection uh, between where the Shoal Creek Trail currently ends to Walnut Creek. Uh, there are a couple of ways that a trail can connect these two segments. This one in particular shows the, the potential connection going through this area south of the Pickle Research Center up Burnett Road, and then up the future Red Line Trail that will run alongside the Cap Metro train line uh, to connect to Walnut Creek Trail. And so Shoal Creek Conservancy is working with a variety of partners, including the Red Line Parkway Initiative, the uh, Austin Corridor Program that's doing many additions of trails and bike lanes along Burnett Road Corridor, um, and the placemaking office to help to guide and um, just have some uh, trail community input in the build out of these connections. So there's that's one set of possibilities. Other possibilities exist within this area for trail connections, but it's really a priority of ours to see at least one of those come about within this decade to make sure we have the western edge of that big loop complete and ready to go. Yeah, yeah. And we can we can actually just kind of zoom in just a little bit here so we can kind of see that a, a little bit more broadly. And um, you, you mentioned a couple of things there that I think are important to kind of point out for the audience. And that is um, in many situations, um, you know, throughout the big loop, as well as uh, as as well as the, the Shoal Creek um, facility, is that it's really a network of different facility types. The trail uh, is sometimes, you know, an on-road facility. Uh, talk a little bit about that because I think that brings some relevance to this next uh, segment as well. Yes, and this is probably a very common theme for anyone who's used to either building or connecting trails in an urban setting. You know, the Shoal Creek watershed was built out 
fairly early on in Austin's history. And a lot of that build out does not leave tons of public open space for new trails. So folks who want to add new trail or add new connections have to be creative with the the public space that we have. Um, So the Shoal Creek Trail that had existed prior to 2020 really focused on the area south of 38th Street. And then in 2020, the stretch between 38th Street to Highway 183 became connected by an on-street dual track bike lane that runs along Shoal Creek and sometimes crisscrosses over Shoal Creek. Um, And so that is a facility that looks very different from the Creekside Trail south of there, but is protected from the car lanes. It is much more friendly and welcoming than just riding in a street uh, for kind of younger or less experienced bikers and allows you to still stay connected to the creek and nature throughout that path. So that's going to be the the issue and the challenge that we continue to see north of Highway 183 is trying to find on-street and off-street options to make a patchwork of trails. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we're going to roll some uh, some some B-roll footage of me actually riding, and and we'll so we'll we'll be able to see from the south, and we'll head north, and uh, and be able to appreciate you know some of those uh, challenges the further north that we get. Uh, but going all the way down to the bottom here, and and looking at uh, where that you know that B-roll that we're going to roll is it, where it starts is, is down here at that connection. You had mentioned it earlier, the connection to Lady Bird Lake. And it is this Southern portion, the Southern terminus that, uh, that all of us here in the downtown area, we're quite, you know, familiar with because we ride it all the time when we're, uh, you know, going to meaningful destinations. So for instance, when I would commute on my way up to REI, when I'd be helping out during the holiday season, I'd actually, you know, go on the Pfluger Bridge over to the uh, Butler Hike and Bike Trail, Butler Hike and Bike Trail to the, the Shoal Creek Trail, and I would ride the Shoal Creek Trail right up to REI. So talk a little bit about this, uh, this segment in this area. Yeah, this downtown stretch is really critical for a lot of people who are getting to specific destinations in the downtown area, or if they're just coming from somewhere in Central or North Austin wanting to get down to the lake for recreation. Um, you know, this this is a zone that is just so highly functional. There's the public library, there's, um, you know, the city hall not too far off from the Shoal Creek Trail Um just a variety of public assets and lots of businesses. You know, the Whole Foods headquarters is a big destination right off Shoal Creek Trail. So this area is just highly utilized and um, fortunately has received a lot of attention in the last uh, five to six years with the connection of a segment, I think we'll see in your video later, um, that filled a gap in the trail and really allowed people to go this entire distance off street through downtown. It's really comfortable at this point. We would like to see that segment of trail widened to the urban trail standards, which if, you know, folks are watching outside of Austin, this might be a different uh, set of definitions. But in Austin, we have an urban trails program that aims to build trails that meet a minimum standard of 10 to 12 feet in width that are paved and are all ages and abilities uh, ADA accessible. So that's a standard that we're hoping to reach for all of the trail throughout this corridor. Um, but some of the trail that we have in the downtown area, especially, is, is meeting most of those criteria and is very nice uh, to travel on. And yeah. one other plug for something fun coming to the area uh, is a new set of directional signage. So if you've ever biked on the Shoal Creek Trail downtown and wondered, what bridge is this that I'm going under or which yeah. road is the staircase leading to soon? There will be signage that will direct yes. all of those, nice. <laughs> all nice. of those questions. Nice. All right. Let's roll the B roll. Sure. Yeah. That way we, cause you already, you already spoiled it a little bit. <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. I uh, no, the no, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. This is, so this is actually the terminus down at Lady Bird Lake. And so that con- connection between the Shoal Creek trail and the Butler hike and bike trail. And uh, I'm going to be turning left here and heading up. 
And the one thing that you had mentioned that uh, that I'll, I'll turn this over and let you narrate it is the fact that, yes, we're connecting to some pretty important places. And speaking of signage, you know, you can have the sign that basically says, OK, we're going underneath Cesar Chavez here. Uh, mm-hmm. So take it away. What, what other cool stuff are we going to see here? Sure. So right now on the, the left side, if you were on the ground, you'd be approaching the new uh, central library. So that is going to be in view, I believe, in a second. Um, There's also the butterfly bridge that's on the right hand side of the screen that you are going to bike under in a minute. Uh, But these are definitely some areas downtown that people typically use the Shoal Creek Trail to get to and that we're hoping more people will use once there's signage, especially down at that Lady Bird Lake trailhead uh, to direct people how to get up to the Shoal Creek Trail. Some people go right past it, never knowing what kind of amenities lie just to their north. So if you're using this segment of the the Shoal Creek Trail, you might have had a moment where you're getting right about here in the video, you're going up a uh, trail that goes near this Third Street trestle and pedestrian bridge, uh, all these locations around here, you've noticed maybe that there's an overgrown bridge with poison ivy and some other plants. That is part of, all of this is part of the Cypress and Shoal Creek project site that Shoal Creek Conservancy and Downtown Austin Alliance are working towards. Um, The goal is many, many different projects. It's very multifaceted. One of which is to actually rehabilitate that trestle into a public plaza that overlooks Shoal Creek. So hopefully uh, we will have a mini Highline type plaza uh, next to that pedestrian bridge in the near future. Uh, Another project would be to reroute the creek, I'm sorry, reroute the trail underneath both of those bridges so that you do not have to do that switchback move that you just did on your your bike in the video. So instead of coming up to this third street level, you could go right underneath right here on the bridge and continue straight on your way. Uh, But if you are up on this bridge and you're going up to the third street level, you'll see a variety of amenities like this pedestrian bridge, like the future plaza on the railroad trestle. And then this plaza that currently exists, Margaret Mosier Plaza, uh, this is one of the many areas that are on that third street corridor that we are proposing to improve and just make it a much more welcoming site and and place to hang out uh, for folks who are coming through on bike and and on foot in the downtown area. So many plaza improvements are part of that Cypress and Shoal Creek plan as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I I think you had mentioned before uh, that that's that bridge, that trestle bridge is on the National Registry. Is that correct? Yes, yes. We just had a kind of announcement celebration uh, for the listing on the National Register of Historic Places. So uh, we, we know that it's not going anywhere, but we are hoping to see it improve. Exactly. Exactly. And now we're doing that switch back down onto the other side and getting back down onto the, the Shoal Creek Trail here. And uh, and we, we, we notice a difference here. This is definitely much narrower through this particular segment here, which is a little concerning, saying, can, <laughs> considering that that building to the left just got built. Ah, come on, guys, a little wider. Uh, but anyways, that's that's life. Uh, I end up going over this particular bridge here because this is one of the bridges that I watched be set in place, uh, you know, within the last five, six years or so, uh, and really connecting over to another suite of businesses in another part of downtown uh, where before you'd have to go all the way around to get to this area. So kind of a neat little, uh, again, it's all about connectivity to meaningful destinations. So, and then I swing. Right. And, and this is another bridge, another kind of trailhead area where if you aren't very familiar with the trail, you would not yeah. necessarily know how this relates to the rest of the Shoal Creek Trail system right. and how it relates to the rest of the downtown destination. So this is going to be another site where a lot of that critical signage, I think, is going to make it feel more welcoming for new trail users. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then now we we sort of dip down below and go underneath. um, I think that's West Street um, that we're we're Mm going to 
go underneath here. There's the and small pedestrian bridge and then West Avenue right above us. West right here. Avenue. There you go. Thank you very much. And um, and then this is another segment that is uh, relatively new. Again, within the last mm-hmm. five, six years or so, this was completely redone. Uh, I can remember when you know, about eight years ago after we first got here, there was a massive, massive flood through here and this whole area was completely ripped up and everything. And so this was, uh, again, another example of sort of the newer treatment and what it looks like. But soon we're going to be into some some older uh, areas, uh, hence the, the areas that you were talking about before, where clearly the size is it's a little it's a little constrained and a little bit narrow. Um, mm-hmm. the other neat thing that, that as we look at here, we look at some of this, this older bridge, this might even be a historical bridge. It's hard to say, uh, kind of looks cool. Um, but you also see the brand new building there. So there's been a lot of development all along through this area. Um, and so that brings up the point that this really is a truly a, a very, very meaningful, uh, transportation corridor for active mobility for many people. And, and again, this is that segment I would ride to REI. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that it's not a surprise to anyone that the number of residents, the number of workers in this area is growing by the day. And so that really highlights the need for improvements, you know, safety improvements and otherwise along the stretch. Uh, you just went past a couple of pedestrians and I'm sure that felt pretty tight, especially without a barrier to your right protecting you from falling into the creek. <laughs> yeah. So there's um, there are a lot of opportunities for improvement here with width, with protective barriers, um, you know, lighting under bridges, yeah. uh, the directional signs that we talked about that are already on the way. And then things, just amenities like benches and trash cans and pet waste stations. So that's another uh, one of those priority projects that was mentioned on that uh, top five project list that we looked at briefly earlier, um, where, you know, in the next couple of years, Shoal Creek Conservancy is really hoping to hone in on all of those amenities that would add just a little more comfort to the trail experience. And, and we're working this fall to start by doing a trail amenities inventory. Uh, we are currently hiring an intern to do that, uh, someone who has experience with GIS. Um, so if anybody's listening who would like to uh, come on for a, a fairly well paid stipend this fall. Let us know. <laughs> there you go. You heard it right here. Reach out, reach out to Ivy and uh, and the Conservancy uh, to to help out with that. So you're looking for somebody who has some GIA GIS uh, type of spirit experience and and be able to help them out. Good, good stuff. Um, so. We talked a little bit earlier about, you know, the volunteer work and being able to help with uh, a lot of the trash pickup and things of that nature. Um, One of the other challenges that Austin is plagued by um, is is the challenge with homelessness and 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 uh, and and really people sort of setting up camps uh, along uh, the trails and and pathways. And and so just like many other cities around the globe. Uh, we are not immune to that. Uh, go ahead and address that in terms of, you know, how the organization is trying to help support all the mi- many other entities that are involved with this, including the city, uh, trying to to maintain a, a healthful environment. Because again, that it, when we're talking about trying to create uh, an all ages and abilities facility, uh, it needs to be an environment where everyone feels welcome. That's true. You know, this is obviously a very widespread and complex issue across our city and many other cities. Uh, but Shoal Creek Conservancy has really been in the conversation with a lot of our nonprofit partners that also care for public park spaces or trail spaces, uh, as well as the Parks Department and the uh, Office of Homeless Services in Austin. So we have been in conversation about trying to find more alternatives to camping in parks. Um, You know, it's very difficult right now when there are laws against camping in parks. However, there's no alternative for places to go uh, for people who are camping. So if we do have enforcement that comes in from either Austin Police Department or the Parks Department that says, you know, this is illegal to camp here in this park or on this trail, you need to 
leave and, and pack up your belongings, you know, folks typically don't know where to go because there isn't another place for them to go legally. So a lot of times folks just end up on the other side of the creek or in a different park that's adjacent to another park where they were evicted. So a lot of the work that we've been involved in is uh, supporting partners who do outreach and uh, provide services for people experiencing homelessness like the Other Ones Foundation. They work very closely with our team and even send their workforce first crews out to Shoal Creek Trail to do some um, cleanup work. And we also have been working with our nonprofit partners to become a, a co cohesive voice from the parks community to find intermediate camping uh, locations where people can have an alternative place to go that's not the hotels or other permanent housing that takes upwards of 18 months to yeah. get into. Yeah, yeah. I paused on this particular image because it's uh, it's one of many activity assets that we're going to uh, run into along the trail here. This is uh, the uh, the skate park, and so you'll see skateboarders over here. You'll see uh, folks on BMX bikes doing tricks in there. Uh, the other day, I think when I was filming this, uh, a gal was on rollerblades, and she was doing all sorts of really cool tricks and, and, and all that in there. And so that's another key point is that this uh, this particular trail is a absolutely marvelous connector to other activity assets, you know, other parks and other park facilities. So good stuff. Right. And just in this area, you also have the Ninth Street BMX Park next yeah. to Duncan Park. And then just north of there is House Park. So there's just tons yeah. of uh, amenities in this area. Yeah. And there, and there was, you know, there is some signage out there now, but uh, what you're saying is, is you're going, that's going to be amped up and there's going to be a much, much more clear uh, wayfinding uh, for the future. So that's yes. really exciting to, to hear. So we're about to get into um, an area here that is uh, a couple of different things. One, we're going to be able to see the, the juxtaposition position um, of the, the trail, and it's obviously very narrow through here with the very, very busy Strode, the street road hybrid uh, that is Lamar uh, Boulevard here. Uh, but we're also going to hang a left here in just a moment and, and take a peek at uh, Pease Park. So talk, take a minute to just kind of talk about um, what's special about Pease Park and that relationship that you guys have with, uh, with the park. And I think they have a conservancy too. Yes, for sure. So this uh, around 15th Street Here is right. where there's this pedestrian and bike bridge going over Shoal Creek. You can very comfortably cross here and enter Kingsbury Commons, which is the southernmost portion of Peace Park. Right. So this is an area that was recently revamped through many, many different projects uh, led by the Peace Park Conservancy. And if you're interested in finding a splash pad or a uh, amphitheater or a ball, uh, basketball courts, there's just tons of great new amenities in the park thanks to those projects. Uh, the Shoal Creek Trail, as we're looking at right now, uh, has always run in this vicinity to the creek, which is just to the right of, of our camera view. Um, and so that section of trail is remaining. It has not gone anywhere. It has been enhanced and you'll see some new plantings along it. So it's really a nice experience to walk and bike the Shoal Creek Trail on this segment of Peace Park. Um, another thing that folks will ask about is, you know, what's the difference between a paved trail and a crushed granite trail or a dirt trail? And really, they're all open to any user types. You can bike on this. You can walk on the, the paved trail. You know, they're all open to various user types. However, um, the goal in the future is to have these more natural surfaced nature trails in addition to what we call the urban trail. So something that is paved, something that is wide and ADA accessible. So there's always an available connection, no matter what user group you fall into. If you need a mobility device, if you have, uh, you know, small kids or stroller, it, it's, we really are hoping to see connections throughout the entire corridor of both um, trail types. Yeah, yeah. 
And, uh, and, and now we can see we're going a little bit further north along here. And um, we're starting to get to uh, an area of the trail where uh, the conditions get a little rougher. You can see that the, the, the concrete is, is pretty chunked up. Um, mm -hmm. But we also get to a point where um, the trail just kind of abruptly ends. Talk a little bit about that uh, in the context of some of the challenges um, and, and and maybe how, I mean, I ended up having to go backwards and going back over that little bridge and then getting out on the sidewalk. Is there going to be like a future bridge that'll get us over or what's sort of the plan for this segment? So just for the, the quick backstory, uh, as with any natural nature scape uh, trails in nature, you know, there are going to be unforeseen things that happen that are out of most people's control. Uh, one of those happened in 2018 when a landslide came down over the western banks of Shoal Creek covering the Shoal Creek Trail. So just north of 24th Street where we're heading on this, this journey here is where part of the trail is currently covered and closed off. So if you are biking along Shoal Creek Trail or hiking along uh, near 24th Street, uh, if, if you're heading north the way you are in this vision, this uh, video, you can actually go up to the street level and cross over to the east side and continue along Shoal Creek on the east side of the creek. But currently, there is a big gap uh, on the west side that is not passable unless you are comfortable going down into the creek bed and crossing. Now, the creek is dry right now, and it typically isn't that particular location. So it's possible to do if you feel um, able to, you know, walk down some steep steps and then walk across a, a rocky creek bed and then back up some steeper steps on the east bank. Not everybody feels comfortable with that. So we really do hope to have a much more ADA accessible uh, crossing in the future. The issue right now with adding something like a bridge or a low water crossing at this area where the landslide has happened uh, is that it adds material to the floodplain. And so there are a lot of restrictions around adding any kind of infrastructure to the creek channel or the creek banks that could potentially impact um, flood risk. So that is something that we've been working with our partners at the Parks and Rec Department and the Watershed Protection Department to see if there are any alternatives or any ways to find a variance to, to make um, a crossing here safer and, and more accessible. I think it's critical for the future, but in the, the meantime, uh, like you said, you know, going back up to 24th Street or going back down to that bridge uh, that gets you into Kingsbury Commons are the more, I guess, comfortable and, and accessible alternatives. Yeah. And here we are. Now we're back <laughs> over that. To the, I guess you said that was the 24th Street uh, little bridge there. So, yeah. So we're, we're back on that one was near 15th, but yes, oh, 15th. Yeah. Okay. They're, sorry. they're both options. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got it. Um, so some, some of the viewers and uh, may have noticed the, the trees that were painted blue. Uh, we didn't uh, have a moment to, to, to comment on that, but that is essentially a, an art installation, uh, to draw attention to, um, what we might lose in our environment. And so it's an environmental art installation. And so, uh, that is a water-based formula. It's not paint, it's not damaging to the trees. Uh, but that particular, um, artist, uh, Constantine, uh, Demopoulos is his name, uh, um, you know, has, has done that so that we can draw attention to, uh, you know, the trees and what we could lose if we don't take care of our trees. So that's what that was all about. And here we are, we're uh, again, you know, kind of moving along. Here's uh, more activity assets, the, the sand volleyball courts. I happened to catch it in the middle of uh, a mid morning on a hot July day. Uh, nobody was playing uh, sand volleyball at the moment, but frequently there are. But more importantly uh, to, to highlight is that disastrous road right next to there, the, the Lamar Boulevard. But this is a critical uh, piece of infrastructure that was built again uh, within the last five years or so because it helps get us under a, a busy uh, street. So talk a little bit about this particular bit of infrastructure. Yeah, this goes under that 24th Street Bridge that we were just talking about. And it is what we would call an urban trail where it's wider. It has the dual track line down the middle. There's protection on the side to prevent 
uh, anybody from, you know, going over a steep bank. Um, and there are even some reflectors and lighting under the bridge as well, I'm pretty sure. And so this is a uh, example of what we would like to see the entire way along Lamar Boulevard, where we have, uh, you know, a, a paved trail that is acting more as a sidewalk currently, but could act as much more with some improvements that look like this. So that's a, a goal of the Shoal Creek Trail Plans and actually has some um, designs in the works for upcoming uh, connections that look very similar to this within the next mile north of this area. Right. Now, you've mentioned it earlier when you're talking about the 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 parks department and uh, public works with the you know urban trails it just it speaks to the the level of complexity in terms of all the different agencies uh the watershed department all the different agencies that that you all need to to be able to to work with as partners um especially when it comes around to building stuff because you guys aren't actually building anything that's right. And we're not the owners or operators of any of these spaces. Um, some of the local organizations have a public private partnership with the city of Austin, such as the trail foundation with the Butler hike and bike trail and peace park conservancy with peace park. So they're able to do capital projects and installation uh, within those public spaces. Shoal Creek conservancy is not, we do not follow that uh, type of business model. So a lot of our improvements are advocacy based and we work, very closely with those partners of the city to identify funds and advocate for additional funds that are available for these public improvements. Um, so like you said, it's, it's a fairly complex web to detangle. And I think most residents don't have the time or interest in learning who, <laughs> you know, the best trail advocate is going to be within six different city departments. And so that's really where our team comes in being able to focus full time on building those relationships and having conversations about you know, where uh, the community wants to see these assets built. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, as a visitor to a city or as a resident, you just kind of look at it and think the city, you know, just it's like, oh, it's all <laughs> part of the city. You know, it's like, you know, wh who, who's taking care of stuff and, and why isn't this landslide been cleaned up yet? And, and, and all of that. So, yeah, this is a still shot on uh, that devastating landslide that took place a couple of years ago or so. Uh, and I think you had said that it took out like uh, over 100 feet of linear feet of the trail. So just really devastating. And the trail will probably never be on that site again, correct? In the current view, we're we are not anticipating this to be accessible again in the near term, no. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're going to have continue, uh, you know, making our way north uh, bound here. And um, a as we do this, uh, talk a little bit about the challenges as we get further and further north. Um, and by the way, this is actually going to stop. Um, this B-roll is going to stop right when we get to the Shoal Creek Boulevard um, uh, on-road uh, facility. So here's a look at that detour sign. Um, because you and I did a recording before. And so I'll have a link to the Shoal Creek uh, Boulevard protected bikeway, the cycle track um, community party. And so if folks want to see that, if you haven't already seen that, um, uh, you can see Ivy be interviewed on that particular day, which was <laughs> wonderful. Uh, I think it was in a couple of years younger. Yeah, a couple of years younger. It was, ju <laughs> it was just before the pandemic <laughs> came in. So mm -hmm. but to talk a little bit more about uh, what we're looking at now as we continue heading northbound here. So this is uh, an interesting place that's sort of a transition for the trail. We're leaving the Shoal Creek Boulevard dog park area and going back into a more wooded segment of the trail. But on the left side of the trail here, you see actually a lot of backyards. So this kind of begins a trend that continues for the rest of the trail's distance where we're really bordering private property on a lot of the Shoal Creek Trail. And that comes with uh, you know, some great access for folks who live nearby, but it also comes with some challenges since that is not land that the Shoal Creek volunteers can do work on. It's uh, not land that the city can build on necessarily. So there's just a, a variety of changes and challenges that come with um, 
trying to improve areas that are constricted by someone else's private property. So I'd say that's possibly one reason why this particular stretch of trail is very substandard. You're highlighting some of the um, kind of buckling trail segments and raised manholes. It, this is not what I would call uh, ADA in any stretch of the imagination. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, there's a ton of needs on this particular segment. And it's also a trail that was built decades ago. So yeah. it's really high time for some resurfacing and, and improvements here. Yeah, um, and you saw that you saw that transition too. I mean, the segments that were most chunked up and most uh, challenging have also happened to be the steepest segments of it. And then when we got up mm-hmm. to the leveler portion, we're back on the natural surface and then onto some older um, asphalt uh, area here. So the you know, there, there is going to be that challenge is that the topography is also a, a bit of a challenge. And uh, in those steep segments, I mean, when water rushes through, it'll, it'll mm-hmm. undermine, you know, quite a few things. So it's not an easy task, not impossible, right. but not an easy task. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. And, uh, sorry for the, <laughs> the, I, I was adjusting my, uh, um, my hand was starting to get tired. <laughs> so I was like, ah, um, so, but yeah, but this is a beautiful part of the trail. I mean, it, it's, it, it's just, you get into the tree canopy here and your stress mm-hmm. level goes down. You're not right next to, uh, Shoal Creek, uh, or Shoal, uh, excuse me, Lamar Boulevard. So it, it's, you know, just a, a really, really special area. And as you're crossing this little bridge here, you could actually stop just to your right. If, if you had the luxury of stopping and reading that historic plaque, mm-hmm. uh, that actually is a historical um, and, and um, commemorative plaque for Janet Fish, who was a resident that grew up along Shoal Creek, who spent her own time and money in the 60s to have a major stretch of the Shoal Creek Trail paved and, and built out to be more accessible to the rest of the community. And she's kind of one of the um, the guiding mothers of the trail that we look to within our work at Shoal Creek Conservancy. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. So we're, we're actually gonna be heading up uh, to be able to get to um, the, the roadway here. And the reason why we're doing this at this particular part, the trail does continue and uh, it is possible to ride along that trail, uh, but it gets a little bit more technical because there is like a, a, a cliff overhang and you sort of have to duck underneath uh, and, and make your way through. Uh, on the way back, I did actually ride that. I, I rode under, but it's, it's really hard to film <laughs> when you're doing that because it's really low. <laughs> uh, but this is some new infrastructure. Talk a little bit about uh, some of, of this work that has been done here because it seems like it's just an on-street thing, but it's a critical trail connector too. So this area is just kind of a, a variety of pedestrian improvements that are part of the safe uh, intersection improvements that have been going in along the Shoal Creek Trail, um, especially north of 38th Street. There have been many of those types of uh, improvements where there's just some kind of texture change on the pavement for pedestrians who are crossing. So, you know, slow down, you're about to get into the intersection, beware of cars. There's a lot of the painted bike lane arrows that has have been added uh, up and down Shell Creek Boulevard. So cars know to expect bikes to be there and to look out for them and just be extra aware. Uh, as we're continuing north here along Lamar, you see, yes, not only is it just close to the road and noisy, but it is extremely narrow, extremely tight. And you have the added challenge of some overgrowth coming through the bars here. So this is a, an area that's of particular interest right now um, and currently being explored for improvements uh, to, to possibly change this from a sidewalk to maybe that urban trail uh, view that you saw earlier closer to the 24th Street Bridge. Um, this trailhead that you see to the left goes down to that area that you said is more technical. Uh, I personally, if you're walking, not biking, but if you're walking, that is my favorite oh, it's place nice. along yeah, It's so Creek. nice, yeah. yeah. It's like it's almost like it. a grotto sort of feel, you know. You're, it is, you, you yeah. feel that coolness because you're, it's almost like you're going through a cave and, and all that. Mm-hmm. So, so walk us through this. Uh, this is what, 31st Street, is that what it is? 
It is. Okay, so what are we right. what are we looking at here? So this is an area that's on street connecting. It's, it's the area between uh, the 31st Street intersection where the trail really ends, and it's connecting to another trailhead uh, that is a little further ahead in the video, but really up until a year ago, there was just nothing here. People would either just walk in the road or they would have to cross the road, walk along the sidewalk and then cross the road again to get back down to Shoal Creek Trail. Uh, and so what you're seeing on the ground right here is some painted lines, some barriers. Uh, unfortunately, there's a truck in this this lane <laughs> at the moment, but um, there's these flex posts and, and lines delineating a pilot project. And this is piloting the concept of having an in-street hike and bike trail to connect those two previously disconnected segments. Uh, those two stretches really uh, encompass the, the biggest missing gap of the current Shoal Creek Trail system. So having this on-street pilot project has really given us a lot of uh, hope for closing that remaining gap and having a much safer connection throughout the, the uh, first, you know, three, four miles of the Shoal Creek Trail that have been the historic section. Right here, there's the potential for a paved trail to connect what we just came off of on the street to the upcoming paved trail ahead. Uh, since this is still a pilot project, the pavement has not gone in, but you can see where you're sort of directed to go across the grass onto this trail. And then this trail will cross over 34th Street um, onto the trail within Cedar Springs Park. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and this is kind of a neat little segment here. You go across and then you, you go over this old bridge and then, uh, and then you're back on a, a, a little portion of the, the trail again. And, uh, and before long, you're at the, the Shoal Creek, uh, Boulevard, uh, you know, two-way cycle track that we've referenced a couple of different times. Talk a little bit about that segment that we just went through and the challenge of, being able to navigate that. I mean, change is hard and, and you're changing the streetscape. Uh, and I don't mm -hmm. know if people noticed, but we were rolling right past a school. So I'm sure there's all sorts mm -hmm. of drama along that. Um, as, as, as your organization, how are you helping, you know, the city kind of navigate that? Because obviously your constituency, your group is, is very much wanting to, to see that consistency and, and to see that gap closed. Absolutely. Yes. Having all gaps closed as seamlessly and as um, logically as possible is really the goal of the Shoal Creek Trail Plan. So whatever seems like it is the safest for a non-native user, so someone who has just never been to the trail before to continue on, that's what we want to see with our trail connections. And so the way that that pilot project is showing the connection, it allows people to come off of either the sidewalk along the Mar or the trail that goes through Split Rock Canyon and then immediately turn left onto the street and have a protected lane to bike or hike through to get to the next segment of Shulford Trail. That's really a what we consider to be the lowest barrier to access uh, when using the trail. So that's something that we've been advocating for in conversations between um, the city of Austin with some of the other stakeholders in the area who have varying ideas about what kinds of connections should exist there. Um, this area, Shoal Creek Boulevard, that you're turning onto now uh, is a similar project that was completed in 2020 where, you know, it, it's a, a bike lane that is added to an existing roadway. And that roadway has existed previously to serve only cars and that's what people are used to but yeah. if you have a, a bike lane that's this added in you know the thought is over time folks will understand the required slowing of speeds on that road and see the benefit of having more access and more uh, safety for cyclists and especially on that shoal creek boulevard stretch we've just seen tons of use it, it's exploded with users from you know very experienced cyclists to kids whose parents now feel comfortable letting them ride down the road to a park or to a friend's house unassisted. 
So it has just been a huge change in um, perception and accessibility that we're happy with. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's get our bearing here, big going back to our map. Um, we, we just were on the Shoal Creek Boulevard. Is that the the portion of the the map here that is the dotted, the blue dots? Is that the on street portion see. of that? It says Shoal Creek Boulevard right there, 45th Street, 38th. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think that's what this Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So uh yeah, so that's it's so exciting to see all these changes all, that have happened, you know, literally in the past, you know, eight or so years since then, since I've been here. Um, and and how long have you been, you know, at the at the helm here? Has this been like three, four years now or just over three years, just over three years. Is it shocking <laughs> just how much is does it feel like you're drinking from the fire hose in terms of like things coming at you? You know, it's, it's gotten to be a lot more comfortable. You know, they always say it takes two years to feel like you really understand your job and you understand your community. And I think that that was true for me, even though around the two year mark, we were experiencing COVID and had a lot of change in our programs and the way that we were able to connect with our community. But we've been able to adjust and adapt to that very well. And I think that we've actually found more efficiencies and more ways to connect to people with our outreach programs and community input programs. For example, the Cypress and Shoal Creek project was going through some major uh, community input opportunities around the time that COVID began. And we got more engagement and more feedback than we ever had in our public uh, in-person community input meetings. So there's there's been a lot of change, but it's, it's been good. We've been rolling with it and everything feels great now. Yeah, good stuff. What have we not talked about that you want to make sure uh, to share with the audience? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I just want to maybe reiterate the fact that we always have opportunities for people to get involved. So, you know, there are a lot of the behind the scenes conversations that happen within our work with the city, with our other partners, but from volunteer work days to our monthly educational tours, which are always free. Um, we just invite people to come and explore with us. And we really try to do public programming up and down the entire Shoal Creek watershed to introduce people to new trailheads, new parking areas, new uh, natural features, just get people out exploring places that they maybe didn't feel comfortable exploring on their own, or they just didn't know how to get to previously and help them see the vision, the long-term vision for how we want these assets to be more accessible and more within the community reach. So please do come out, check out our website at the events tab and Shoal Creek Social is a great way to join us in person and learn more. And um, yeah, we just hope to continue growing our community. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff too. So since we're an international audience, uh, literally people you know across North America, around the world are tuning into this. Um, any any sage advice in terms of uh, being able to navigate uh, you know such a, a complicated and complex uh, type of system where uh, this is this is a natural resource it's also a transportation corridor uh, you're having to, to navigate uh, so any sage advice that you have for uh, uh, folks in communities where they may have a similar type of, of maybe repairing corridor that they'd like to see activated in a similar way? Sure. You know, there are always going to be instant gratification projects with no matter what field you're in, there will be instant gratification projects. And it's great to have those. And we, we definitely have a lot of hands-on volunteer work days that can see change and see impact right away. But one of the things that I've had to learn and really um, adapt with with humility is patience <laughs> and learning to really take the long haul vision. And not to say that, you know, people around you can't uh, get behind an image or get behind a vision and move quickly towards that vision. I just think that it's a lot more um uh, gratifying and realistic to begin looking at a holistic picture of your projects, especially if you're working 
in an area that's dense, that's developed like a city, you're just going to have a lot of factors at play with anything that you want to change. So having a, uh, a wide network of supporters and having an open mind to new partnerships and then having sort of a, a long-term vision and planning out ways to phase in projects to help create a more holistic end result with your partners, with community support, that's really the way that you're going to have the most fulfilling and successful and long lasting projects. So I think that that's, that's probably one of my takeaways is to just don't, don't rush ahead at the easiest low hanging fruit, really take the time to plan meaningful and successful projects. It sounds like it's it's almost like a strategic thing of if you're needing to get some momentum, go for some of those low hanging fruit to get the ball rolling and get people seeing the vision. And then once you start getting that, uh, you know, start tackling some of those critical things like a gap that has to be addressed. Mm-hmm. And uh, but then really exercise that patience, as you just said, and and have that broad base of coalition support of of getting more people to the table. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, good stuff, Ivy. It has been such a pleasure catching up with you. Thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it, John. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Ivy Kaiser with the Schulte Creek Conservancy. And if you did. Remember, give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below, and uh, and be sure to share it with a friend. That's the most important thing that you can do is uh, help us spread the word about the Active Towns channel. I really do appreciate it. And the other thing I appreciate is you subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that subscription button and ring the notifications bell right next to there so you can identify uh, what your notifications preferences might be. And uh, hey, I really appreciate you tuning in and uh, look forward to having you uh, for the last two episodes uh, coming up here in season three. Billy Fields will be up in a couple days. And then next week, we've got Doug Gordon with The War on Cars uh, for a live streaming event in episode number 150, the final episode of season three. And by the way, I will be taking about three weeks off (laughs) between season three and season four, uh, but I will be pushing out some other short form content uh, from Colorado, which is where I will be filming some events up there. Uh, Again, thank you so very much for tuning in. I really appreciate you doing so, and uh, we'll see you again soon. So this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.